Okay, Pom, really keen to talk about Jack Silvani here. Um, he seems to be undervalued for those outside of Carlton. You'll hear conversations with your supporter mates that don't go for the club and they'll say, oh, you know, he's rubbish or he's he's overrated by Carlton supporters. We know what he brings intrinsically to us with the whole family connection, but also with the way he plays, with his effort. But what I wanted to do in this video is look at where you know where he's at and, and then how he's going, because obviously drafted in 2015, we now enter year number seven, which is crazy. We're pretty much halfway through his career um, and the story of Jack Silvani. And, and then there's really been a notion over the last probably 12 to 18 months of, you know, where do you play him? Because he can really impact in a range of areas on the ground. So I guess what we'll do is I'll let you kick things off with just generally how his improvement has come about. Well, it, it's true what you say. People don't rate him. I, I have Richmond mates who say he's only there because his dad's Steve. If he was called Jack Williams, no one would want him. All that malarkey. But one thing I have noticed when I've spoke to opposition fans is they notice him when he plays them. Suddenly they see, oh, he's not there because of his name. He's there because of who he, of what he brings. And one thing that impressed me when I went through his numbers is an average improvement across the board of 6%. Wow. That's, that's, that's huge. And that, that, that backs what we think about him, that he is a guy that plays with heart. He is a guy that really puts everything out there. And I think that's backed up in his improvement across the board because we all know if you try, genuinely you get better at things. And I think that's something that no one talks about about Jack. His improvement as a footballer from when he was drafted to now is, is huge. I think so too. I mean, also he has been on the receiving end of just, you know, crazy injuries. I remember the um, the shoulder. I remember the, the Zach Merritt kidney punch, which had him out for a while. He, he really hasn't had a clean run at it apart from probably in that 2021 period where he finally came back in the side and then, and then he really started to show. And he's a kind of player that, Give him more game time, and it's almost like game by game, he's going to get better. Spot on. And he's someone that I would say as a football coach, if you were a coach, you need players like this, some guy that you can rely on. And I think all top teams have it. And Jack is someone, as the time around the ground, it is above average. He does get moved around a lot compared to a lot of other players in the league. You see him just about in every position on the AFL field in a game. Um, a great example this year for Carlton would be the Collingwood game where he was forward for a bit. We saw him at full back. We saw him on the ball. He was literally all over the ground. So he's someone as well that that would affect a player. If you did that to Patrick Cripps, I'd imagine Cripps would be in chaos. Jack has the ability, though, to go where he needs to and do his thing. And I think that's an understated part of Jack's game. He's the Swiss army knife of footballers. Yeah, and he brings that effort and heart and and soul everywhere he goes. So I, I guess the next question is, what now for Jack? So what we've done here, or what you've done here, I should say, is you've gone through all of the stats that he's ever produced as an AFL player. And you've had a look at how they stack up with him as a forward, as a defender, and as a midfielder. So kick us off with him as a forward. So 78 games of love for Jack here. But So when he's in a forward, if you round this into a full game, this is what you're expecting from Jack. This is what we'd expect. Um, and fairly decent numbers and really not dissimilar to what his career averages are because we know out of all the positions he's played, predominantly he's a forward. But... Real healthy numbers. And I want you to look at the third one, tackles inside 50. For me, we know that that's something that I moan about with Cal. And it's something that proper grinds my gears. And it's something that Jack is known for. His pressure acts, his ability to always be around and to really put pressure on defenders. Something that Jack does exceptionally well. And that is something that we don't have enough of. His career is 0.9, bearing in mind that he spent about 30% of it not there. That's high. That That's like, that's high. Like last okay. year, 
that would have won our inside 50 count. Matty right. always had 1.1. He was the only one to average one tackle or more inside 50. That's how good he is. Yeah. Well, I mean, look, at the end of the day, he was drafted as a, what, like a third tall, like a second, third string forward who could potentially push up the ground a little bit more. So th these are just looking at him as a, as a pure forward. The goal kicking is definitely something that I'd love to see him get better at. It's definitely been something that he hasn't quite got a hold of yet, whether that's a development thing in his legs or the routine. or I mean, I feel like he's got a pretty good set shot routine, but for whatever reason, just hasn't quite quite able been able to yet be so efficient with it. So that's definitely something I'd love to see him get better at if we're going to keep him as a forward. Keeping in mind, we don't exactly know what Voss's plans are. I mean, we're filming this on the 21st of December, 2021, and we haven't seen our group play since Voss was appointed as coach. So really interesting. Do you think he'll be a forward for what it's worth? I hope... I don't want him to be. We we know I, I'm in the midfield camp. When we get to that, you'll see why. But I, I like Jack as that option forward. I think when you look at them tackle numbers, he would be someone that, if I was the coach, I'd be looking at a Whitfield role where mm. I just throw him wherever I need him. And I think I, I'd be happy if he was the third tall. I'd take him over McGovern, put it that way. If you said we wanted the three tall system, Jack gives me the ability on the ground that Mitch doesn't. Okay, that's uh, that's interesting. Let's let's look at him as a defender before we hit the midfield. So, what have we? What did you come up with here? First of all, how did you get to these numbers? Because obviously, he hasn't played a lot of time as a defender. So, what have you done here? Have you standardized these numbers? Yeah. So, what I've done is I've gone back, watched every passage of play, taken where his disposals are, looked at where he was in that passage of play, and standardized it into as if he was there all the time. So. He often, it's quite surprising how often he is down the back. I was actually shocked when I did this research, particularly in the first year and this year, he spent a lot of time going back down there to help. And his numbers are impressive, particularly his exit. One thing that's underrated about Jack is his field kicking. It's something that we talked about in 2020 on the show. He leads our inside 50 to chance creation. He did yes. that year. And it's something that no one talks about, that he does actually use the ball pretty well when it's in his paws. And as you can see, always been a strong marker as Jack, but this is where he comes in. He's got the Silvani arms. As you can see, all three of them are behind me. And one thing they've got in common is they've got long gangly levers and he uses it supremely well. If you watch Jack in a marking contest, he rarely gets beaten. If he loses the mark, that guy ain't leaving with the ball. It's on the deck and it's now a yeah. fight. And that's something he brings. And I, I don't mind. Call me crazy. Everyone's saying who's going to be the third back. Jack could be it. As in like a weedering young Silvani trio? Yeah. And I mean, come on. He, he's got Batman in his blood, hasn't he? I mean, he, he, his dad was pretty good. Wanny. His, dad was, his dad, was, down his dad was serviceable, at least a little bit serviceable as a defender. But I mean, one thing that Jack does, and when we get to the midfield, we'll talk about it more, but is his second efforts. That's something that there isn't a stat for. When I looked at him when down the back, particularly the Collingwood game, he spent nearly a quarter down there this year. When the ball hits the deck, his second, his third, his fourth efforts, no one gets a clean possession around Jack. It's something that's phenomenal about him. And also, I like him down the back with his ability to use the ball. That's something that Plowman comes into question. Now, I'm not going to pan Plowman, but one thing that Plowman does tear my hair out with is when he does get the ball, sometimes his, his decision-making is questionable, as a few desks you've owned will, will prove the point. Jack hits targets. That's one thing Jack is good at. He's very confident, under pressure, of delivering that ball out in front of the guy receiving. So, understated point of his game. Yeah, I think his decision-making is, and in, in that footy IQ is, is really what separates him. And I guess that's really a good segue into these midfield numbers. So, this is what he looks like going through all the vision, all the tape, and then, you know, flaring out the numbers as if they were a full game. This is what it kind of looks like if you played a full game in the midfield. And this is what we're talking about. 
for me, when you look at Jack and people go, right, what's Jack about? Go back and watch the St. Kilda game where yeah. he spent a lot of time in the Rook, right? Now, people talk about Jack and go, could he be our second Rookman? His Rook work was fucking terrible. It was <laughs> horrible. He should be nowhere near a Rook. The closest I'd let Jack to a Rook is if he plays white as the chessboard and he can hold the Rook there. That is it. I'm not letting him near the rook. But why everyone thinks he's good is because he acted as a midfielder. So he basically stood in the rook contest. Once the tap was done, he acted like our midfielders should do. He stood his ground. He drew the line and no one got past him. He went and stopped that ball leaving that contest. And his numbers are phenomenal. Like I went and watched that St. Kilda game. And I implore you after this video, go and watch it. 25 touches in that game. Nine tackles. Nine yeah. tackles. Well, Some of our midfielders don't have nine a year. Well, this is the thing. We spoke about him having the defender's gene with his dad. His grandfather was a rover. His yeah. grandfather played many games as a rover. And I spoke about this off camera with you. There's this notion that you've got to be fast and speed is everything you need as a midfielder. You, we all know how I feel about that. I've spoken about it too much. Timing beats speed. Jack Silvani is someone that has timing and he kind of, I mean, I, I, I know comparisons can be taken out of context, but the way Jack has the footy IQ and he's not fast, but his timing is, is, is great, kind of reminds me of, can he become like a Job Watson type midfielder who also wasn't fast, but his footy IQ was there, was in his blood. And I just look at this. I mean, if this was our second or third or fourth best midfielder, this would be a great uh, addition into that spot in the ground, right? Oh, I, I I have been on the Jack Silvani as a midfielder train for about three years. And every so often the club take him and put him in the midfield. And I'm like, yes. And then they throw him back on the forward line. And I think this proves it. You watch what Jack does. A huge issue for Carlton is his breakdown in them contests. And something that Jack does is he doesn't let you out. That St. Kilda game, Steele is working overtime to do what Steele does, and that's get the loose ball and just smash his way through. And nine times out of ten, Jack Silvani is the man who's like, sorry, not today. Yeah, Learn to do something. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. You can't be pretty and big all the time. You've got to actually do something. And Jack doesn't let up. And for me, if I was the coach... It would be played across the back line in the pocket and he'd be thrown into the midfield when I need him. When I need this game to be dirty and to grind and to stop it, when Petrarca's doing his little melty thing of skirting contests, Jack would be there and I'd say, let him know what Carlton's about. And you look at these numbers, they're phenomenal. And that's, go back and watch that St. Kilda game. Everyone yeah. said he was a great Ruckman. No, he wasn't. He was a great midfielder and he midfielder. put the rest to shape nine tackles. Five clearances, like this guy had a day out and no one talks about it. Yeah. Well, the beauty of Jack is if you ask him, he'll probably say he just wants to, he doesn't care where he plays. He'll play anywhere. And that's why we love, we love that attitude and we love him, obviously. Um, but also the other notion, you know, from 2020, 21, and now as we move into 2022, the notion has been these five goal swings. So when teams get on a run at the moment, what do we do? I mean, obviously we've got we've brought in a, a, a George Hewitt who's a defensively sound midfielder, great, um, you know, honest midfielder. I think we're missing something by not using, not having used Jack to help with these runs because it seems like, I mean, this is very anecdotal from me, but it seems like everywhere he goes, anywhere you put him on the ground, the level of effort, the level of intensity, the level of tackle pressure just rises, whether that's in the midfield or the forward line. Spot on. And I think a great example of what he can do would be look at Neil Bullen at Melbourne, a forward that when Viney went down, they started to bring back to do the Viney role of put the tackles in, lay the pressure, slow the game down, let us ascertain a bit of control on the game. And it's something that they did really well. And if you watch the grand final, something they did exceptionally well, Melbourne did. They started to pack the contest. Western Bulldogs were getting away from the game, but they came in and they literally from then tried to slow the game down and bring it back on their terms. 
And I think that's an understated part of, like you're saying, what count and don't do. Jack Viney in the final had four tackles in a quarter when the doggies were on top and it was the momentum swing there. This is what Jack could do. You throw him back in there, say, right, they're getting on top of us. Just stop the ball coming out. Just slow it down. Let everyone have a breather. Keep going through some stoppages and we'll eventually get control back. Underrated part of Jack's game. And for me, I remember a couple of years ago, this was the man charged with making Cripps learn to beat a tag. And Cripps was horrific against a tag. And I remember going to training, open training, and Jack working with Patrick Cripps and Jack battering Patrick Cripps. And I remember watching it thinking, if he can stop Cripps, why isn't Jack doing this in a game? Yeah. Because Cripps is a freak. Like, all the other players look like children compared to Cripps. So if Jack can stop him, get him. So for me, Jack is an underrated part. And if I was Voss, I'd say this is the midfielder. The, the X factor in the midfield is often offensively. I think nowadays a lot of X factors defensively as well. Jack brings that. Well, we talk about, we've heard Vossi talk about being a powerful team. I think Jack embodies that. He, 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 I think probably 2019 is where it started, where he had he developed that strength through the hips. If you watch him, very rarely, if not ever, does he get taken to ground. Uh, and and he, he's developed that power through the legs now. It's really just about getting a full preseason into him and then just a healthy run at it. No interruptions, no weird, wacky injuries. And then I think we're going to see... I think he's a real breakout contender in 2022 um, because he's got the body of work under him. And also he hasn't seemingly had a clean run at it. And then, you know, if all goes well, he gets that clean run at it. And then people will be saying he's come out of nowhere when the reality is he actually builds off his year every year. I think he's the next, this generation's Ed Kerner, the yeah. guy that I reckon Jack will start getting the kudos when he's 32, 33. Yeah. And everyone's like, Jesus, he's been consistent for Cowan. And yeah. that, that's a wonderful place for Jack to be, I think, yeah. because he can just go about his work. Yeah. All right, guys, let us know what you think about Jack Silvani, because there's a very broad range of opinions as to where he should play his best football. If we could clone him, we obviously would. We've, uh, you know, we, he's a third generation player. Unfortunately, we can't have all three of them playing at once. So where would you play Jack Silvani? Where, where do you think we get the, the most out of him? And uh, how do you see it playing out? Let us know in the comments. Hey!